Hello, my name is Yen Liao. I am the founder and portfolio manager of Aravat Global. I'd like to thank Professor Richardson for this opportunity to, to share some thoughts with the MBA class of NYU Stern in their alternative investments class. In this short video, I'd like to take you for a tour of the long short equity industry and how it's evolved over this past 25 years. If you could please read this disclaimer before reviewing the rest of these slides. Thank you. So in the 10 to 15 years prior to GFC, long short equity was uncorrelated and could generate superior returns. Post GFC saw the collapse in the front end of the interest rate regime, and that has had a profound impact on the long short equity industry. The industry over this past decade has been stuck somewhat in between uncorrelated and less robust performance. However, with virtually no yield in markets now, and institutional portfolio still facing six to 9% liabilities, there is a profound need for the 40 in a 60, 40 portfolio or what we call a bond proxy. While the long short industry has lost its and, we can no longer be uncorrelated and generate superior returns on a sustained basis. It now needs to choose one of the ors. Do we port our alpha to an uncorrelated bond type return or do we port it to a higher net structure to give ourselves a fighting chance of superior through cycle returns? Alpha is extremely valuable and scarce. We as an industry face a choice on where does that alpha get ported to? I am very excited about this coming decade for active management and long short equity in particular. I believe we are moving potentially into a low return market that is more volatile with higher dispersion and potentially more concentrated leadership. This is almost a perfect setup for long short equity to make a meaningful contribution to our clients portfolios. Over the past 30 years, interest rates have changed dramatically. On the top chart is the federal funds target rate or the front end of the curve upon which short rebate is priced. The bottom is the 10 year US Treasury. I believe this is representative of global bond markets at large. There are three profound implications from a lower interest rate world on the hedge fund industry. The first is our model has changed specifically through the mathematics of short selling. Second is I believe we're facing a higher asset valuation world as many of the assets that were sitting prior in bonds will need to come into equities in order to give portfolios a chance to hit those six to 9% hurdles. And then finally, I believe we're potentially moving into a higher market volatility environment. Elevated valuations tend to add more volatility. Market participants have changed dramatically over this past decade with um, quant passives and in the absence of market makers only exacerbating volatility in times of market stress. This is the return curve of what hedge funds have done over this 29 years. So the light blue line here is actually the MSCI world on a trailing 12 month basis for every month between 2000, sorry, between 1990 to 2019. This is some analysis that Goldman Sachs's prime team put together. The dark blue is what hedge funds reflected through the HFRI index has done prior to GFC. The dark green line is a bond index, the Barclays Global Aggregate Bond Index and what bonds have done throughout that 29 year period. And then the light green here is what's the HFRI index, again, a proxy for what hedge funds have done in the period post GFC. In summary, the decade since GFC has seen GPs or portfolio managers and the investment teams of hedge funds have been very confused and frustrated. They've been used to this level of performance and with this level of expectation from their efforts and have been struggling to deliver and break out of that band. LPs have equally been disappointed and frustrated with the long short world 
I believe the return curve for a long short equity structurally changed in 2008. Amplifying the pain in our industry has been a cyclically strong market. Long short equity is a defensive structure. It is designed to outcompete markets through cycle. Anything less than a hundred net exposure is not designed to outcompete very strong up markets. It's designed to beat down markets and middling markets. Markets have been cyclically very strong over this past decade. On the bottom here, the S&P 500 in this 29 year sample has compounded at 9.9%. Over a 60 year period it is 10.1%. The S&P post GFC has experienced 17.3% dividend reinvested compounding. I don't personally believe that the return curve of markets has shifted to the right permanently. I believe this is a cyclically strong period of returns in broader markets and will mean revert over time. That has amplified the frustration with long short equity as this is the period of market returns that the structure consistently would underperform. So let me walk you through the mathematics of short selling. There are three components in the math of short selling. The first is the alpha produced plus the rebate we get paid to short a stock minus the market return to generate the PL. Prior to GFC, we used to receive about 500 basis points of rebate. The market return for the past 60 years dividend reinvested is about 1,000 basis points or 10%. And henceforth, um, if market returns, by the way, on a price basis is 7.1% in the in year between eight and a half and 9% within, with, with dividends, it gets to 10% with dividends reinvested. So if it was market returns of 7% to approximately eight and a half, nine percent with the in-year dividends, it only required about three to 400 basis points of alpha for a short to break even over cycle or generate accretive PL. So what happened? Rebate went to zero. Indeed, it's slightly negative now. I still believe the long-term market return of the, of the forward 60 years will be the same as it was in the prior 60. And so what happened to the structure of short selling is it went from a break even to slightly profitable endeavor through cycle to now loss making if we can generate alpha consistently. What has exacerbated it is in this past decade, markets have been cyclically very strong, generating 17.3%. And that has created a tremendous drag on our short portfolios within a long short structure. So I wanna introduce the concept of alpha transport. Alpha is very hard to generate consistently. It's extremely valuable. All sources of alpha are valuable. However, the next question that needs to be answered is what is the structure you want to port it to? In this example is a traditional lower net exposure model. So 165 gross, 35 net exposure. On the top here is pre-GFC rebate through cycle market return, which would have generated approximately 15% gross returns. I want to highlight in the analysis I'm about to share with you today, I'm only going to focus on gross returns. Our industry is also evolving from a fee structure and fee alignment perspective. Net returns is the only thing that matters for client returns. There's the difference between gross and net returns is the fee, the fee structure and expenses. I'm going to focus only on gross returns as candidly that whole area of fees is evolving rapidly. The second area here is when the rebate is has gone from 500 basis points to zero, same thousand basis points of through cycle return. What has happened to the gross returns of, of a low net structure is it's gone from 15% to approximately 12. The return curve shifted left. And during this cyclically strong period post GFC, what has happened is it's slightly underperformed uh, that very, very strong part of the cycle. However, from an alpha transport perspective, the question is what's net or structure or and gross do you want to port it to? This is assuming the same 165 gross, but now porting it from a 35 net to a 75 net. And so what you see on the top here, same comparable 500 basis points of rebate pre GFC, a thousand basis points through cycle. It's taken a 15% gross return to an 18% gross return through cycle. Adjusting it down for now in zero rebate environment, it has shifted this curve to the left from approximately 18% to 16% and 
And then in the cyclically strong part of the market, this structure can significantly outperform on a gross basis. So what is the path forward? I believe it's potentially potential that equity markets may face lower returns in this next decade with more volatility and more dispersion. I think this is a bountiful setup for long short equity. As expected market returns fall, the amount of short alpha required to break even falls. So here's the math. If market returns go to 600 basis points with dividends reinvested, and, we, and, and the skillful long short manager can generate 500 basis points of short alpha, even in a zero rebate environment, the drag from the short book is materially reduced. And in a lower return environment, a low or higher net structure can actually significantly outperform that market. It's all to do with the mathematics of short selling. And so a low net could contribute 10.4% against the 6% market return on a gross basis, and a higher net can generate almost 13%. I believe both structures are going to contribute meaningfully to portfolios in this next decade if market returns revert to mean or below mean levels. So here's the what if. What if the market does return back to the 60-year mean or lower Long short equity will cyclically benefit from that. If you add a sprinkle of volatility and wider market dispersion, our ability to generate alpha and port it will only increase. So again, the black line here is S&P returns for the past 29 years has been 9.9%, 10.1 over 60 years. In the period most recently post GFC, it's been 17.3. Imagine it goes to the red line and it goes to either back to the mean or below the mean. And then we port the alpha if to, to that dotted red line where we can port that alpha to a higher net structure and make a very meaningful part, meaningful contribution to portfolios of our clients. So our industry in the hands of skillful long short managers has two very important roles to play. One is in filling the need for bond proxy, which specifically requires uncorrelation in the definition of being up into a down market. Correlation into up markets is not that relevant, but it must be up into down markets. And then the second use case here is porting the alpha to a higher net structure to generate superior through cycle return. So in closing, the 10 to 15 years prior to GFC, which was called the golden era of hedge funds, saw uncorrelated and superior returns. The collapse in the interest rate regime on the front end of the curve profoundly changed the mathematics of short selling and our industry at large. The industry, including us, got stuck somewhat in between being uncorrelated and less robust performance. There is a vast institutional need for a bond proxy. The 60-40 structure in that 40 requires something that can fill it, that can provide performance. And long short equity is uniquely positioned to fill it. And so while our industry has lost its and, its ability to be uncorrelated and generate superior performance, our industry faces a choice now of whether it wants to port that valuable alpha into uncorrelated bond type returns or to a higher net structure that gives us a chance to deliver superior through cycle returns and make a meaningful contribution to our clients' portfolios. And then finally, I believe this next decade is potentially bountiful for active management and long short equity in particular. If the world is lower return, more volatile, higher dispersion, and potentially more concentrated in its leadership, that is a bountiful setup for long short equity to contribute. I thank you for your time. I hope you found this useful and I look forward to your questions in person.